This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Two of St. Catherine's Most Wanted Captured Two of St. Catherine's Most Wanted Men are now in police custody. They are 29-year-old Sean Boxster, otherwise called Balisha, a truck driver of Mac Vickers Lane in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, and Sean Oliver, otherwise called Big Wayne. Boxster was reportedly arrested during a police operation on Thursday and was subsequently charged for murder. He will make his first court appearance on September 2. Oliver was arrested on Friday. Vendors lose millions in Falmouth market fire. Three vendors who operate in the Falmouth market in Trelawney lost a combined $18 million worth of goods to fire, which destroyed their stalls Thursday night. The vendors, Audrey Gordon, Simona Jarrett, and Andres Campbell, had stocked their stalls and were looking forward to the last Wednesday of August for the best bend-down sale outside of Christmas. Through tears of anguish, Audrey, popularly known as Rose, spoke with the news. I've lost every god almighty thing. Shoes, bags, sneakers, uniform material plus other clothes for both adults and children, boys and girls, she informed. Simona, with a dazed look, wondered aloud how nothing was saved despite the fire station being less than a quarter mile away. I know why. None of the fire emergency signals work. When the firemen eventually arrived, all they could do was to prevent the fire from spreading, she said. Deputy Superintendent Roland Blissett of the Falmouth Fire Station promised to get back to the news after a meeting. However, up to Friday evening, he had not called and his phone rang without an answer. Counsel for the Falmouth Division, Garta Wilkinson, visited the vendors and promised to help. I can't tell you what will happen, but I will do all within my powers to find a way to get a start for you, he told the women. The items were not insured. Teen charged for housebreaking after confessing to his mother. A teenage boy has been arrested and charged with a burglary and larceny after confessing to his mother. The Seaforth police in St. Thomas say on May 21, a man securely locked his house and left home, but returned to find that it had been broken into. The police say several items were missing, including $150,000, cellular phone credit, and a cellular phone. The teenager was arrested and charged on August 22 after he confessed committing the crime to his mother. His mother also returned what was left of the cash and the cellular phone. Pistol and ammunition recovered in Ocherios. A Glock pistol and ammunition were recovered Friday as the Saint and police turned its attention to the Ocherios market and the bus park under its Operation Leviticus anti-crime measure. Superintendent David White, who led the operation, which included members of the Jamaica Defense Force, Municipal Police, Jamaica Public Service Company, and the Transport Authority personnel, said no one was held in connection with the recovery. The police say over 100 stalls were searched and 23 offensive weapons found. The JPS team identified 15 stalls suspected of having illegal connections and removed the wires. The police say 27 temporary stalls were destroyed and four summonses served. During the operation, 21 tickets were issued to motorists and the 15 license plates removed from motor vehicles. Relatives in anguish as body of missing girl found search continues for cousin. A near 12-hour search yesterday for two young girls swept away by a raging river during heavy rainfall in sections of St. Mary on Thursday resulted in the recovery of the body of one of the cousins as raw emotions and unbearable grief consumed the relatives. 10-year-old Kiwana Ricketts, 14-year-old Halkia Biggie Smichael, Halkia's twin sister, and Kiwana's mother were reportedly washing by the river behind their home in Machine District, St. Mary, on Thursday afternoon when tragedy struck. Eyewitnesses say Halkia lost her balance and fell into the river, and when Kiwana tried to rescue her, they were both washed away by the current. A frantic search and rescue effort was launched but was called off when night fell. At 5.30 a.m. on Friday, the operation to locate the missing girls resumed and Kiwana's body was recovered. The search for Halkia will resume today. Kiwana's mother, Yannick Taylor, was overcome with grief as she viewed the body of her 10-year-old daughter 
Shortly after it was fished from the still murky waters in Gibbs Hill, miles away from where she was last seen alive. Halkia's twin sister and other family members fainted as the tragedy became all too real and had to be revived with rubbing alcohol and water. The search party, which included members of the police force and the military, was alerted to news that Halkia's body had been found in Castleton, but when they made their way to the location with relatives of the child, it turned out to be a false alarm. Halkia's older sister, Lassian Cummings, told the news that she was broken as a death in this manner was never envisioned, losing a cousin and a possibly her own sibling. Words can't explain. I feel very, very sad about this. When I reach, they find one and they get a next call that one in Castleton and now that we come here, nothing. Wow, it's painful. My sister is gone, she said. Biggie was jovial. Cummins, who took the day off from work to join the search party, said of Halkia. She have her own little style them. She was full of vibes. Anytime you their own are just laughter. Halkia's father, Christopher Smichael, told the news that he works very hard to take care of his daughters and was very upset that one of his 14-year-old twin girls remained missing. Me get a call to my daughter, Jonah, me say a lie. And my boss tell me to go and check it out. By the time I reach a machine, me see a crowd of people and me just step off of the bike and head to the riverside. He said, soaked from searching the waters. Consumed by worry, he had not eaten since the dreadful news. Although he is not living with them, Smichael said he and his children are very close adding that they would often visit him at his workplace. Halkia's stepmother, who cried during the journey in search of the missing child, noted that all the children's school supplies, including books and uniforms, had been purchased recently in preparation for the start of school in just over a week's time. Also soaked from the waist down as he searched the murky waters, Deputy Superintendent of Police Romeo Henry told the news that the cops are committed to finding the missing girl. We were hoping that we would have found the body of the second child fair dead before the day is closed, he said, noting that the prank call disrupted the search effort. Henry said that the terrain was difficult and the water proved hard to maneuver as the flow was still heavy. He noted that the Marine Police and the Jamaica Defense Force were part of the effort. We are happy to have the JDF on board. When we reached out to them, it was a yes right away. They have been traveling the stream with us and the Marine Police are monitoring the seaside, Henry told the news. Arrangements being made to return bodies of Jamaican brothers who died in the U.S. Arrangements are being made to have the bodies of the two Jamaican brothers who died on Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts two weeks ago returned to the island. 21-year-old Tavon Bulgin and his 26-year-old brother Tavares died on August 14 when they jumped from Jaws' Bridge on Martha's Vineyard during a late-night swim. The body of Tavares was removed from the water the morning after the incident. However, Tavon's body was not found until four days later by a fisherman. The father, Reverend Keith Bulgin, said he and his wife are now in the United States, making arrangements to bring them home for burial. The boys have been released from the medical examiner's office and resting in a funeral home for travel to Jamaica, their homeland. We are awaiting the necessary documents, both from the local authorities here in the United States, which should be ready soon. You know in America, everything has to be done by the system, so you have to wait a little. Then these documents will be sent over to the Jamaica Consulate in New York for the relevant approvals for my boys to travel home to Jamaica their homeland. We are hoping for this to happen soon. As for the exact day or date, I cannot say. Man killed in Negril. A man was yesterday killed on the non peril road in Negril. The incident took place about 5.30 p.m. at a bar and a restaurant across from a service station. It is understood that the man lives on the property. The full identity of the man who is called a papa and the reason for his killing were not available. However, the news was told by people in the area that several shots were heard. A larger crowd and police investigators were at the scene. The killing in Negril is the third over the past 24 hours. The other two men were killed in Grinch Hill.
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.